Why are you not using Lagrangian mechanics to solve this problem? La what? Lagrangian mechanics. It's yet another formulation of classical mechanics. Okay, that sounds amazing, but let's start from the basics. Of course I'm gonna start from the basics. When have I started with the complicated stuff in the past? Let's get rid of this Newtonian mechanics first of all. Now that we have this blank slate, we can rethink classical mechanics entirely. Lagrangian mechanics is based on energy. We're gonna have the kinetic energy, which I'm going to be calling T, and we also have the potential energy, which we typically call V. Are we going to add the energies? In our new formulation, we're not going to be adding these quantities to get the total energy. Instead, we're going to be subtracting them to get a new strange quantity. This is what is called the Lagrangian. What's really powerful is that I can take this quantity and then I can take its partial derivative with respect to the derivative of one of the coordinates and then I can differentiate that with respect to time and this will be equal to the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to that general coordinate. This looks awfully complicated, but let me show you some very simple examples. So imagine that we have an object that is falling under gravity. Let's say that the mass is m. The Lagrangian for this particular object is just the kinetic energy take away the potential energy. So the kinetic energy is just going to be a half m v squared. And rather than writing v squared, I'm just going to write this as x dot squared, where the dot signifies the time derivative. Then we're going to take away mgh, which uh, in this case the height will just be the x-coordinate. Now let's take this and plug this into this equation. The very first thing that we need to do is to take the Lagrangian and take the partial derivative with respect to x dot. Remember if we're taking partial derivatives we're assuming that every other variable in the equation remains constant so the right hand side will behave as if it's totally constant. In this case dl by dx dot will just be equal to, so the 2 is going to bring over, is going to come over here, so what we're left with is just going to be mx dot, and then what we need to do is to take the time derivative of this, so the mass remains constant in this case, so I'm just going to add a second dot, dot denoting that we're taking the second time derivative. Okay, well, this thing here will be equal to the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the x-coordinate. So now the left-hand side will be treating that as a constant, and what we're going to be left with is just minus mg. Well, this right here is actually our very equation of motion that we've just figured out. For my second example, I will look at simple harmonic motion and that is at the heart of physics. So let's imagine that we have a little block for instance with a spring, spring constant k, a uh, block is of mass m and uh, this object is oscillating along this coordinate. So this here will be our x coordinate. What is the Lagrangian for this system? Well, this will just be equal to the kinetic energy, which is going to be a half mv squared, which once again we're going to write it as m, a half mx dot squared, take away the potential energy. And remember the potential energy of a spring was given by half k uh, x squared. We're going to follow the exact same steps. So partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot, well this will just be equal to 2 over 2 m 
x dot, which we can just write this as m x dot, but then we need to differentiate this yet again. Therefore, I'm going to make sure that right hand side will be given by the partial derivative of dl with respect to uh, x. Uh, in other words, this two will come up here. So what we're left with is just going to be minus k x, i.e. x double dot is equal to minus k over m x. And once again, we've recovered the equation of motion for simple harmonic motion with only a couple of steps. And now let's also do the example that you were kind of struggling with. So what you were looking at was a simple pendulum, let's call that of mass m, that is swinging. Now let's say that the length of this pendulum, shall we call that just l, which makes this length here l, and this entire length here, here will also be L. What will the Lagrangian for this system be? First of all, we need to choose our coordinates and um, in the case of the pendulum, it's very convenient to be describing this in terms of the uh, angle theta. And because the pendulum is essentially moving in a circular arc, what we can actually say is that the Lagrangian will be given by the kinetic energy, which we can just say is going to be a half times the moment of inertia of this system and then we're going to be multiplying that by the angular velocity squared. If you've never come across this before, the moment of inertia is the equivalent of mass in the rotational world. Well, looking at this, this here is a right hand triangle, so this here will just be L cos theta, wouldn't it? Yep, that's the adjacent. Uh, therefore, the height will be the entire length uh, L, take away L cos theta, which is just given by L1 minus cos theta. Well, subbing back this into the Lagrangian, this will be given by a half. Omega is the angular velocity, the rate of change of the angle, essentially, of the angular displacement. So we can just write this as theta dot squared, take away mg L1 minus cosine theta. I think we have our Lagrangian and we can sub this back into the almighty Euler-Lagrange equation and get our equation of motion. In this case, my x dot will actually be theta dot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this equation with respect to the theta dot variable. So dl by d theta dot will just be given by this two comes here, so that will just be given by two over two, which is going to cancel in a second, times the moment of inertia, and then multiplied by theta dot. So those will just cancel out. And what we need to do after we've computed dl by dx dot is to differentiate yet again with respect to time. So that's going to give me just i theta double dot. And this will be equal to the derivative, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the variable, not the derivative of the variable, which in this case is just theta. Because it's partial, um, this whole left hand side is going to be cancelled because we're treating it as a constant. And what we need to differentiate is this with respect to theta. This term here we're just going to go. Then what we're left with is going to be plus mgl d by d theta of cosine theta. What we're going to get is that i theta double dot will be given by uh, mgl and then the derivative of cos is negative sine like so. The moment of inertia in this case will just be given by the value of the mass multiplied by the distance to the pivot point squared. So in this case, this is just L. So I will just be given by ML squared. Theta double dot is given by minus MGL sine theta. So the M's are going to cancel this here is going to be cancelling. So what we get is that 
theta dot is going to be minus g over l sine of theta. Now, a simple pendulum only exhibits periodic motion for the small angle approximation. So using the fact that for small angles, sine of theta is approximately equal to theta, we can write our equation of motion that theta dot is just minus g over l. And this right here is the equation of motion for a pendulum, rederived only by a few simple steps plugged into the Euler-Lagrange equation. Now I'm absolutely sure that you don't want to just to learn the physics of this, but you want to do it well and you want to do it fast. And this is precisely why you should watch this video next, which will give you some hacks that will be crucial to your learning of physics right over here.